everyone, so Leanne here. And as you all know, Ministry of Education recently launched a mathematics intervention, which aims at improving our students' performance at CSEC in mathematics. And as a part of this intervention, I am here at the Guyana Learning Channel to deliver some video lessons to you, the students, which should help you to be better prepared for your exam. Ensure you tune in every Sunday from 5 to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesday from 7.30 to 8 p.m where I will be looking at every topic in the syllabus and working some past paper questions to help you to be better prepared. So with that being said, let's head into our fourth video, which will talk about the laws of indices. So at the end of this video, you should be able to one, identify what is a base and what is an index, and two, simplify algebraic expressions using the laws of indices. So let's do a brief recap on the parts of an algebraic expression. So let's say we had the term 5x raised to the second power. So this small number at the top is called, as I said just now, it's called the power. I kind of gave it to you when I read the expression. And the x is called the variable. And the 5, it's called the coefficient. And these are the parts of the algebraic term. So what is an index? So as we saw in the previous slide, an index is a small number at the top. But what exactly does this number do? What does this number mean? Now, let's say I had 5 raised to the second power. This small number at the top, 2, is telling you that this 5 is multiplied by itself two times. So 5 raised to the second power is the same as 5, 5 multiplied, multiplied by 5. And if I had x raised to the third power, x multiplied by x, multiplied by x. So that is that is what an index represents. So the laws of indices. So before we can actually head into these laws, we must be able to identify what is an index and what is the base. So we already know to identify the index. The index is a small number at the top. Let's look at what is the base. So let's say we have a term, 5 raised to the third power. We already know that this small number at the top is known as the index. And this 5 now that is being raised to the power, that is called the base. The base is the number or term that is being raised to a power. So this is called the base. So let's say we had another one. 3y raised to the fifth power. Now this 5, once again, is called the index. And the y, which is being raised to the power, is called the base in this case. So the y will be the base because the y is being raised to the fifth power. So those are the parts that will help you to use the laws of indices. Now let's look at some brief um, examples in need to find the base and index. So we'll spend some time on this because this is important. As long as you can identify the base and index, that will help you to use the laws of indices. So the fourth one is b raised to the third power. So the three will be the index and the b will be the base. And the second one, four y raised to the fifth power. So the five will be the index and the y will be the base. And now we have m. Now, as you can see, m is not being raised to any power. So, when you don't see a term or a number being raised to a power, we, sh we should know that a power is there, but that power is invisible, and that power is 1. So, when you don't see any power, just know that it is being raised to the fourth power. So, in this case, m would be the base, and 1 would be the power. And the same thing goes for 7. 7 would be the base. And once again, we don't see a power, but we know it's the fourth power. And 1 will be the power. And as you can see, I'm using the word power and index interchangeably because they both mean the same thing. Power or index. You can use whichever, whichever one you're comfortable with. But just know that they both mean the same thing. So number 5, we have AB all raised to the fifth power. Now AB is in a bracket and in the entire AB is being raised to the fifth power. So in this case, the index would of course be five, and the base will be the entire AB. 
And the last one, x raised to the second power, y raised to the fifth power. So in this case, we have two sets of indices. So the first one would be y would be the first index or power, and two would be another index. So the base for the index five would be y, and the base for the index two would be x. Because remember, the base is what if it's being raised to the power. So each index will have a base. So now that we have a solid understanding of identifying the base and the index, now let's head into our force law. So the force law says, when multiplying terms with the same base, write back the base and add the indices. So this is one that you will definitely have to use a lot in your preparation for the exam and in the exam itself. So you need to pay keen attention to this law. This will be used a lot. So when the bases are the same, we put back the base and we add the indices. So let's look at the first example. So let's say we had x to the second power multiplied by x to the third power. And as we can see, the base for the first term is x and base for the second term is x. So they are the same. So we write back the base and we add the indices. So 2 plus 3 would give you 5. So x to the second power multiplied by x to the third power would simply give you x raised to the fifth power. So the second law, we have 2a raised to the third power multiplied by 3a raised to the second power. So when we have terms with coefficients, as we looked at the parts of the algebraic term just now, when we have terms with coefficients, this is what we do. We multiply those coefficients first. We multiply the numbers first. So that's the first thing we do. So we have 2a raised to the third power multiplied by 3a squared. So the first thing is multiply 2 by 3. So 2 times 3 would give you 6. And then a to the third and a to the second, the bases are the same. So we put back the base and we add the powers. So 3 plus 2 would give you 5. So when we have terms with numbers and we are multiplying, we have to ensure we multiply the numbers first and then the variables. So the next example now, negative 6x to the second multiplied by 3x to the fourth, y to the second. So in this example now, we see we have negative and positive numbers. So this is taken as a step further. So when we have negative and positive numbers and so on, these are the steps in which we do our multiplication. The first thing to do is to multiply the signs. As long as you're multiplying and you have signs, you always multiply the signs. In the earlier examples, the first one, x to the second multiplied by x to the third, we did multiply the signs. But we know a positive times a positive will simply give us a positive. So we kind of ignore that part because, you know, not the sign did not change. And the second example as well, we had positive times a positive, which will give you a positive. But in this example, we have negative 6 to the third multiplied by 3x to the fourth, y to the second. So we have a negative 6 and a positive 3. So we multiply the negative times the positive. That's the first thing you do. You multiply the signs. And then you multiply the numbers, which, which would be the coefficients. And then you multiply the variables, which would be the letters. So let's multiply the signs. Negative times a positive would give you a negative. Now the numbers, six times three would give us 18. And now we have the vari variables, x to the second multiplied by x to the fourth, y to the second. So we have bases, some bases are the same. So what we do, we do, we put back, those bases are the same, which would be the x. We put back the base that is the same, which would be the x. And then we add the powers for those bases. So 2 plus 4 would give us 6. And then we have y to the second. There's nothing to multiply the y with, so we just stitch on the y. So negative 6x to the second multiplied by 3x to the fourth, y to the second would give us negative 18x to the sixth power, y to the second power. So let's add in another example just to cement this concept. Let's take things a bit further. So let's say we have negative 4a to the second b multiplied by negative 3a to the third b. So once again, 
The first thing to do, the first step is to multiply the signs. You're always multiplying the signs first, and then the numbers, and then the letters. So always keep that at the back of your mind. Signs, numbers, letters. So let's multiply the signs. So a negative times a negative would of course give us a positive. And then we multiply the numbers. Four times three would give us 12. And then eight to the second times eight to the third, we put back the A and two plus three would give us five. And then B times B, you know, which is B to the fourth times B to the fourth would simply give us B to the second. So negative four A squared B multiplied by negative three A cubed B would simply give us positive 12 A to the fifth power B to the second power. And that is how you use this law to simplify some algebraic expression. So let's look at the second law. So the second law, you're kind of going in the opposite direction to the first one. So the second law says, when dividing terms with the same base, we write back the base and we subtract the powers and indices. So just now when we were multiplying, we added the indices. Now when we're dividing and the bases are the same, we do the opposite, which is subtract. So let's look at the fourth example. So you have x to the seventh divided by x to the third. So the bases are the same. We write back the base and seven minus three would give us four. So this would be x to the seventh divided by x to the third would give us x to the fourth power. And a second example, let's say we had 16a to the fifth divided by 4a to the second. So just like in the previous examples, when we were multiplying, we said we multiply the signs and then the numbers and then the letters. So it, we do the same thing for division. We divide the signs. So we know positive divided by the pos positive will give us a positive. And then we divide the numbers. So 16 divided by four would simply give us four ones, four, four into 16 will give us four. So 16 divided by four, four would give us four. And now we have a to the fifth power divided by a to the second power. So the bases are the same. So we write back the base and then five subtract two will give us three. So 16a to the fifth power divided by 4a to the second power would give us 4a to the third power. So let's look at another example. 6x to the second power multiplied by 3xy to the fifth power all divided by 2y. So we have a combination of multiplication and division. So let's see. Let's multiply what is at the top force and then we'll use the this law to divide. So this, let's go. 6 times 3 would give us 18. And x to the second times x would give us x to the third, y to the fifth. And all of this will be divided by 2y. So, of course, we have to divide the numbers force. So 18 divided by 2 would give us 18, 2, 2, 2 into 2, 1. 18 divided by 2 would give you 9. And then we have y to the fifth divided by y. So those bases are the same. So we put back the base and we subtract 5, subtract 1. So this will therefore give us 9x to the third y and 5 subtract 1 would give us 4. So when we simplify this, we end up with 9x to the third y to the fourth. So let's look at the last example. So let's say we have negative 10a to the 6 multiplied by 2 all divided by negative 2a to the 4th power. So of course, we got to work out the top. We have a lot of things going on at the top. So let's work out that. So we have negative 10a all raised to the 6th power multiplied by 2. So of course, you multiply the signs for us. A negative times a positive would of course give us a negative. And 10 times 2 would give us 20. And there's nothing to multiply the a to the 6 by, so we write back the a to the 6. And 
all of this will be divided by 2a to the fourth power. Negative 2a to the fourth power. So, of course, we got to divide the signs for us. So, a negative divided by a negative, that will give you a positive. These two will cancel out. And 20 divided by 2 will, of course, give us 2 into 2, 1. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And a to the 6 divided by a to the 4th would give us 6 subtract 4 would give us 2. So this answer will be 10a and 6 subtract 4 would give us 2. So when we divide negative 20a to the 6 divided by negative 2a to the 4th, we'll end up with a positive 10a to the second power. And with that, it brings us to the end of our fourth video on laws of indices, in which we looked at the first two laws of indices. And in the next video, we'll explore the other laws. And of course, at the end, we'll do a combination of all the laws, questions that have combinations of all the laws. And I hope that you, this video was helpful to you, and I trust that you will tune in on the next video.